So let's continue where we left off with the gas station uh, little implementation where we had two threads, one of them fueling the gas station and the other one taking fuel from that gas station using the uh, condition variables that we uh, learned about. Now, this works fine if we only have one thread of each. So this is perfectly okay. We can see that if we launch this, we're just gonna get uh, the proper waiting time and then after there's enough fuel the car actually decides to get the fuel from the gas station and then it gets filled again um, but what happens if we have more than one car at the gas station let's say we have uh, four cars what's actually gonna happen um, if we try to change I'm gonna change this here so that it's a five so this one, this one, and this one is going to be all five. All right, so we're going to have one uh, guy that fuels the gas station, which is going to be the last one created. Actually, that's four. And the other four are going to be the actual cards. And here, of course, we're going to join all of them. Let's see what's going to happen. If you try to run this, you'll notice something very interesting. So first thing we can notice is that, well, there just isn't enough fuel for all the cars and the problem just hangs there waiting for the fuel to come, but there's no fuel to be fueled with. So that's one issue. But the other issue is something that we can notice that whenever we fuel, only at most two cars get awakened from their uh, slumber to check if they have fuel, right? So here you see getting 15 fuel, there are two cars that check, and then getting 30 fuel, there's only one. Getting to 45, again, one that checks and gets actually the fuel. And then again, there isn't uh, enough and so on and so forth. And then when we get to the end, there of course isn't enough fuel for everybody. Now, this is a bit interesting. What did you expect that all the threads would wake up at that point so instead of like after the after we fueled 30 into the gas station won't you expect that four uh, cars would look and see whether or not there is a uh, enough fuel for them to use well that's what i would expect but this is not what happens here and that is actually because really the behavior of pthread con signal so pthread con signal in this case um all it does is it signals one thread to wake up and actually check whether or not it has enough fuel and if it doesn't that's it it doesn't go to the next car and checks if if it doesn't it's gonna wait again and that's it so this uh implementation currently just signals one of the threads at basically at random threads do have priority and it's going to be based on that uh but in this case all of them have the same priority so it's going to signal only one thread and only one thread is going to check that makes the program not necessarily correct now one thing that is important to realize is that well you can never execute this code here where it checks in the while loop in a multi-threaded fashion because if you're executing this code this condition that means that you get the you got the lock on that mutex and that means that no other thread got that lock so it's of course going to be all the other threads are going to be waiting on that lock and only one thread is going to be able to check and of course if it's going to be able to check it's going to be able to subtract if it can okay so in this situation it kind of is correct because Really, if there is, for example, 45 fuel, right? so if there's 45 fuel here, uh, then, well, one thread is gonna be signaled and it's gonna say, okay, well, we have more than 40, so we can get out of the while loop. We're gonna subtract, we're gonna print the message, and then we're gonna unlock, right? And then the fuel is gonna be five. So at that point, right after unlocking, there's no point in actually, uh, checking again if there is enough fuel because we know for sure that there isn't enough fuel if the if the thread 
actually was able to subtract fuel from it. But this is not always the case. It might be that instead of fueling 15 at a time, we might be fueling 80 or 60 or something much larger that would cause this uh, situation. So let's say we actually fuel 60 at a time, right? So that's 60 times five, that's 300. And we here are expecting to have only 160 in total. So now if I try to launch this, we, we can see that at every point we do get a uh, thread that finishes execution, but at some point, namely here where we have 80, two threads could have, two cars could have uh, filled their fuel tank with 40 fuel, right? Because two times 40 is 80, but only one did. And after it, it started, the, the fueler started fueling again because only one thread got awakened using the Peter const signal. Right, so there are multiple threads waiting on this condition, like we have here, with signal, only one of them gets awakened. So what can we do? Well, how can we make it so that all of them do awaken? Because at this point, we can have situations where we want to have that, where we want to, uh, for two cars to actually fuel their fuel tank. Well, we can use instead of pthread signal, we can use pthread broadcast. And this guy is exactly as it says, it broadcasts the signal to all the waiting threads. So now we're gonna see a whole different uh, result. If we try to launch this, you will notice that every time a, a field fuel message occurs, we get at least four messages on the screen. So here we got a gold fuel and the other three, well, looked at the fuel and says, okay, well, this guy got uh, that from 60, uh, this guy subtracted it to, four, to 20. And then, well, I now have 20. So not enough for this condition. Therefore, it's just gonna be waiting again, waiting again and waiting again, again. Don't forget, these are actually sequential, even though are in different threads, because whenever each of the thread executes this code, they have a mutex locked, right? So this one got executed first, then this one, then this one, and then this one. None of them got executed at the same time. Okay, so we now have four of them after each fuel fueling message, right? So we can see that, okay, here four, but after it, we only get three because, well, this guy actually got the fuel and finished its execution. So we only have three here. So at this stage we have three, two of them got the fuel. So that is the expected result. This is what I was expecting to see. And uh, it's actually improve, an improvement. Um, we got two of them to refuel their tank. And then uh, one last thread that had to wait one more round of fueling. So this is what Peter Cond broadcast does. Now it's not guaranteed with Peter Cond signal that only and only one uh, thread is awoken, but it is not at all guaranteed that all of them are gonna be awoken. So for uh, all types of purposes, you should actually uh, use broadcast when you, you want all the threads that are waiting on that condition to awaken, to restart executing and check the condition. And at this point, we can change it to have as many fuelers as we want. So if we, let's change this to, let's say 30, and we're gonna go here in the main for loop. Let's say we can say six. Uh, actually, I have to change this to six and this one to six as well. And I'm gonna say i equals four or i equals five. And then I'm gonna have two fuelers and four cars that are waiting to fuel their uh, gas tank. So now if I try to launch this, of course, I'm going to get uh, two times those messages where it says field fuel, but at every point it says field fuel, that broadcast occurs for all the waiting threads. Okay, so uh, here at the beginning, we might be getting just two uh, messages simply because uh, remember, we are still having to lock the mutex in the beginning. So uh, it might be that two cars got to lock this mutex and get to the p, -cond, p thread cond weight, 
which again unlocked it, but the other two didn't get to do this, so they are stuck here for a bit. Right, and then probably this is where the other two started or got to this bit that can't wait. But after it, after that uh, whole endeavor finished, like after all four threads got past this uh, lock, you can see that after each fuel we have four messages. And of course we have three, two, one, and then that's it. And this is really all there is to condition variables for the most part. There are certain attributes that you can add to the uh, condition variables that we might go over at a later time, but for most situations this is enough. And I hope you understood what's going on here and are going to be able to use uh, the condition variables wherever you need to. And if you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. The source code for this lesson can be found on our website. Again, link in the description below. Take care. Bye.